Hello, I'm Ryan Sunglee at Rappler.com, and we're coming to you from the Aloha Sports Complex in Paranaque City, Philippines. Uh, Gretchen Abinyal, the 2005 World Amateur Bronze Medalist and numerous time world title challenger, will face Chamaporn Chiron of Thailand. Six rounds, two minute, six two minute rounds in women's boxing. Of equals for our next round, referee Bergy Estrella, Dutch Carl Baluyot, Salvador Lopez, and Robert Bridges. And there in the ring, we have Abinyel in the uh, the white skirt. She's 17 and eight, six knockouts from Puerto Princesa City, now based in Sydney, Australia. And Kyren, her opponent, is five and one with one knockout. She's from Buriram, Thailand. Philippines doesn't see much women's boxing, but what it does in the professional ranks is due in large part to the woman in the white uh, skirt. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to welcome you once again here at the Flash Grand Ballroom, Elorde Sports Center, Suka Paranyake City. Tonight, Elorde International Boxing Promotions proudly presents our next battle of the evening. The three judges at ringside, Carlo Baluyo, Salvador Lopez, and Robert Bridges. And inside the ring, in charge of the action, referee Ferdi Estrella. And now, ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of professional boxing in the women's middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing black trunks, official weight 102 pounds. Professional record, five victories, including one win coming by way of knockout with only one defeat. Fighting out of Buriram, Thailand, here is Chamaporn Chairin. And now introducing new supported her opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Very wide trunks. Professional record 17 victories, including six wins, coming by way of knockout with eight defeats. Representing Puerto Princesa City, Palawan, Philippines, the Royce Gretchen. And you could just hear it from the reaction from the fans. They love Gretchen Abinyel. She is, she has not fought in the Philippines since 2014, but she's on the best run of her career. Even though she's been around for a long time, she's been a pro since 2006. But she's won two straight, including a, a split decision win in Germany over Aslam Sahin. So she has a pair of belts, and this is a tune-up fight. This, she has not fought since July of 2016. This is a tune-up fight for a challenge of IBF minimum weight champion Zhang Jukai, who Abinyel fought in uh, 2015. And Abinyel is uh, jumping right up on her opponent early on. Abinyel's letting that right hand go. She's putting a lot of pressure on Chiron. Chiron, who has uh, lost just once in her career. That was uh, back in August of 2015 against uh, Louisa Houghton, who now, of course, is a world champion out of Australia. I spoke to Houghton about this fight, and she expects Abinyel to score an early round knockout. But Abinyel's putting a lot of pressure on Chiron. 
I asked Abigail what she thought about this fighter. This fight might not last that long. Abigail's all over her. Abigail is all over Chiron. But Horton told me that she expected an early round knockout for Abigail. And, but also important for Abigail, she must make sure not to get cut because the fight, uh, which was originally scheduled for July and was postponed, uh, is now uh, probably going to happen October 28th. At least that's what the uh, offer was from the camp of Zhang Zhukai. Uh, Abigail would like to have this fight take place in November instead. So this is um, an opportunity for Abigail to beat up on a sacrificial lamb. And of course, these are two minute rounds, which is why you're hearing the clapper so early. Here we are into the second round. And in Abigail's corner, we have uh, Tony Del Vecchio who trains Abigail out of the Bondi Boxing Club in Sydney, Australia. Abigail has been based there for the past two years. Uh, her husband lives there with her. Uh, she, uh, her and her husband were sponsored for visas. So uh, after this fight, she's going to return back to Australia and apply for her permanent residency. So the So the 31-year-old Abigail from Puerto Princesa City is uh, life is going on for her. And uh, as I said earlier, she was a bronze medalist at the 2005 World Amateur Boxing Championships in Russia. And um, you know, shortly afterwards, she turned professional uh, because the there was not much interest in uh, women's boxing in the Philippines, and she. Uh, she turned professional in China, and uh, in 2007 uh, was able to uh, fight her second fight in the Philippines. Abigail is all over Chiron. Chiron is stumbling about. Abigail is uh, not giving Chiron any space. Uh, she lands a left hand and a right hand. I asked uh, Abigail what she what she knew about Chiron before the fight, and she said, "Well, she looked like a, a kickboxer." And uh, Chiron goes through the ropes, and she's helped back in by Abigail's trainer. So uh, it was Abigail's uh, coach who actually yelled out uppercut and. Chiron says, yeah, that doesn't sound like a bad idea, and throws an uppercut of her own. But um, amazingly, for all of what Abigail has accomplished in boxing, and it's been considerable, uh, she is more or less uh, unknown in the Philippine sports scene. Even though she is a trailblazer uh, for women's boxing, I remember a number of years ago, I actually found out about Abigail. Um, another pro boxer named Maureen Shea uh, from New York told me about her. And she said, uh, watch out for this uh, young woman. She, she can fight. And Abigail's had a pretty good career so far. There we are, the end of the second round. actually holds the uh, the GBU and the WIBF and I guess the WIBA uh, minimum weight titles. That's 105 pounds. Abigail is 105 pounds for this fight. And uh, Chiron is actually three pounds lighter at 102.
Nightingale's not even sitting down in between rounds. She's ready to get in there already. As you can see from Abigail, the, the expression on her face, she loves to fight. She was born to do this. And here we are, uh, round three begins. And uh, Chiron is boxing and moving, which is not a bad idea when you're fighting Gretchen Abigail. And you can even just see from the, the, the difference in size of their legs, that's where the punching power comes from. Abigail has... Uh, the, the much wider base and, that, and that's where you get those and that was a nice left hand right there by Abigail that's where the power comes from if you remember Mike Tyson and David Tua those were not guys who had uh, thin legs and uh, we're getting a little bit of uh, wrestling here uh, so maybe uh, Abigail was not correct she, she was not a kickboxer Maybe she's a, uh, an all-around mixed martial arts fighter. So Abigail's, she's won two straight, but she's trying to shake off some rust against an opponent who uh, can't match her physically. Uh, but perhaps... Perhaps you can shake some rust off and work on a few things. And, and they're having a bit of fun in there. And there goes Abigail, letting her hands go. It, it looked a bit like Chiron was trying to uh, get in a knee to the body. And in a Muay Thai fight, that would have been completely appropriate. There we are, end of the third round. We are beginning of round number four. And if it feels like these rounds have been have been blowing right by, it's because they're only two minutes. And Abigail is getting a lot of work in along those ropes. She is the larger and the stronger of the two. Oh, and Tyron looked like she was gonna go for a leg kick there. She forgot what sport she was playing. Sorry, Muay Thai is on Thursdays. And Abin yells all over her now. Backs up to the ropes. We did not get to see if uh, Abin yell had any, uh, if she knew how to check a leg kick. Although she, she herself comes from a martial arts background, so maybe she knows how to do that. There may have been a head clash there. But there doesn't seem to be a cut. And uh, as they wrestle in close. Oh 
So the fight is not as clean. As Abinya would have wanted it to be. Abinyel's uh, trainer is uh, talking to the referee. He, he wants to uh, ask for a caution about the the clinching, the wrestling in there. Round number five begins, and, uh, and they're waiting for the the ring to be cleared, and and now the action begins. Abigail comes out with her jab and throws a couple of punches, and goes downstairs to the body with a couple of blows. So hopefully we're not going to see any uh, leg kicking in this round or attempted leg kicks. You can see uh, that Chiron doesn't um, have the boxing base that Abinelle does. When she, even when she throws punches, it, those punches are largely uh, ineffective. And inside, Abinelle is able to just bully or whatever she wants to do. And I'm checking if there's any uh, markings on Abinelle's face, and there there aren't any which is a good sign if she has to have a quick turnaround for a, an IBF minimum weight title fight. Because uh, she may have to fight ne again next month. And, and that, that fight is expected to be in Macau. It was a nice stunning right hand by Abigail. That fight may be in Macau which is what the original contract was for. That was a nice, nice jab to get inside there by Abigail. As you can see, we're standing room only for this fight. Uh, they don't get to see Abigail very often and when they do, they want to make the most out of it. Yeah, for, for women's boxing, I always wonder why aren't there um, ring card boys? Now, I, I've seen them here at this venue, but that's when they were cutting some costs that day. I believe that was Christmas 2013. And here we go. The sixth and final round. The two fighters embrace. And Abigail is going to go right back to work. She lands a nice right hand and she's trying to get rid of her fighter here. Does not want to go to, a, to the scorecards. And Abigail's hair has come loose, so... We're gonna have a pure sixer the rest of the of the night. And 
and uh, she's going to do a, a bit of impromptu hairstyling of her own. And this, this is one of the things that um, happened with women's boxing uh, from time to time. One of the difficulties you have to deal with, it's hard to land punches accurately and defend against punches when your own hair is flying in your face. Of course, we remember seeing this when uh, Paulie Malignaggi was fighting, uh, defending his 140-pound uh, title in the rematch against Lovemore to do, and he actually was wearing uh, extensions. They came loose, and he had to have his hair cut. But Abinyal lands a big right hand over the top. And that was a nice scoring blow. So most of the scoring blows uh, tonight have been from Abinyal. And uh, Abinyal is actually holding her hair back inside her boxing guard. So she's protecting herself and also keeping her bangs back. So you know, she's uh, innovating on the fly. And uh, this is going to be the end of the fight right here. Abinia won every round. Um, so it was a nice workout for Gretchen Abinyal in her first fight in the Philippines in three years. And uh, Abinia is on the stool. But it appears that the fight is over. I guess um, they're going to fix her hair first, or? <laughs> or perhaps Abigail actually doesn't know that it is a, a six-rounder. No, she's just getting her hair done. Uh, So she had a, a bit of a an unexpected uh, hair issue, but even still, she won that Pro round. May we call on Mr. Romel Gonzalez, Assistant Vice President of BPI. So we're awaiting the scorecards. I have it 60 to 54. Abinyel, I thought, won every round. And I would be very surprised to hear anything other than a 60 to 54 scorecard. We might get a 59 55. Just uh, a courtesy round. Six rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Carlo Baluyot scores about 60-54. Salvador Lopez has it 60-54. And Robert Bridges scores about 60-54. All for the winner by unanimous decision. Gretchen Abinyal is the victor in her homecoming fight. And she looks to uh, bigger and better things. A rematch against Song Ju Kai looks to be next up for her, the IBF minimum weight champion. So for Rappler.com, I'm Ryan Sugglia. Thank you very much for tuning in.